airclips.com Okay, uh, good evening uh, everybody. I'm Alain Boquin, I'm captain on the flight uh, tonight and uh, I would like to welcome uh, Airclip Promotion uh, on our Aerostrad flight from uh, Paris Hors de Gaulle to Réunion Island. Uh, we are three pilots, Lindsay Finet on my left side and uh, Nicolas on my right side. The duration of the flight tonight will be 10 hours and 30 minutes. We have good conditions uh, on the route and perhaps a little bit cloudy at our arrival in Réunion Island. Um, Nicolas will be the pilot flying tonight and uh, I will be the pilot monitoring and uh, Lindsay Finet uh, will do the walk around with uh, you uh, for the, this flight. And uh, there are 13 uh, um, flight crew uh, on the cabin and we are ready to go now. Hi guys, uh, as you can see, we are in the hotel uh, in Paris Charles de Gaulle. So within a few minutes, we will join the cabin crew, take the bus and off we go to the airport. Hey guys, uh, so as my captain says, my name is Nick. So welcome on board. I will take you, I'll try my best to take you safely down to Iranian Island. And uh, today is gonna be a normal flight, normal flight and uh, we will, uh, we will do, um, I mean, uh, all the briefing and everything uh, on board. So now let's go, guys. Uh, let's go. Come on. The, the flight is waiting for us. Let's go to the airport all together. Thank you. So the walk around is one of the pre-flight tasks the pilot has to do before the flight. So it's a bit like in the aero club when you fly small airplanes, you have to check your plane before the flight. So here it's what we do again, it's what we do also. Uh, so the techniques already checked uh, the plane, but we also have to do it uh, before the flight. So it starts on the left, front left of the airplane, where you can see the the sensors, so you have the angle of attack sensors, the TAT probe, a nice detector, a pitot tube. Then we move forward to the uh, nose gear, we check the tires, the gear strut, we check that it's not completely deflated or not fully extended, so in a normal position. We check the wheels, everything looks normal, gear pins is removed. From this panel, you can see we can contact even the fly deck to ask for something or to, to check uh, if the parking brake is set, for instance. Here we have a lever that we can select for normal position for taxiing the aircraft or in tow position to connect the tow bar that you can see uh, just here. So here you see the tow truck, the tow bar that will be connected.
soon to the aircraft. The access doors are all closed and secured. On the left side, you see also the, the other sensors, so angle of attack, uh, TAT probe and the two uh, pitots and the ice detector. On this panel, you can see the cables, which are the ground power units to power the aircraft with electricity. Uh, initially, then we, start, we will start the APU soon and we can uh, therefore remove the, the external power. You can see that the cargo doors are still open, so they are still uh, loading cargoes. So today we have uh, about uh, 15 tons of cargo to go to Reunion. So lower part of the fuselage, everything looks normal. Here's the, one of the cameras we have uh, on board. The ram air intake that we see over there, everything is looking normal. Leading edge of the aircraft. So now we see the right engine. As you can see, it's a huge engine. Those engines are the General Electric GE90, rated at uh, 115,000 uh, pounds of thrust, which is a huge amount of uh, power. It's one of the biggest uh, and most powerful engine that uh, are actually in use. The diameter is more than three meters. So you see the fan is turning with the winds. Everything looks normal. So come with me at the back of the engine. We see the exhaust. Everything looks normal and uh, we can move now along the wing. So the fuel uh, tanks are inside of the wings. Leading edge, everything looks normal. At the wingtip we check uh, the nav lights. Everything. Uh, it's working normally. Static dischargers that you see on the, on the wingtip, discharger wicks, all in place. Over there, you can see the exhaust uh, of the uh, jettison in case we have uh, to dump fuel. If, for instance, we have a problem and we have to come back for landing, if we are too heavy to land, we can dump fuel via this uh, jettison uh, nozzle that we have on both sides, of course. The ailerons, everything looks normal. Flapperons. Now the, ra the right main uh, gear, which is called a uh, truck. You see six, uh, six wheels. So we check basically that uh, there is no sign of uh, leak. Uh, everything looks normal. The parking brake is set so we can check the gear wear over there. The indicator should be uh, within limits, which is the case. The wheels, everything seems right. The strut, everything is looking good. On this uh, aircraft, the, those two wheels, those two wheels at the back can move I can turn actually to help the aircraft turning when it's when we are making a steep turns. So those two uh, wheels uh, can turn with the aircraft. So it's in normal position. Gear pins has been removed. Over here, uh, behind this panel is the ram air turbine. So it's uh, an emergency turbine that actually falls down. Uh, in case we lose uh, all electricity on board and it will provide uh, electricity and uh, hydraulic power uh, in case of an emergency. Lower part of the fuselage at the back, everything looks normal as well. Cargo is loading. This, this little door over there is the bulk uh, where you the, the crew uh, where 
all the luggage of the crew are, are set. Stabilizer. So the APU is over there. It's not yet running. So from this side, you will be able to uh, see the, uh, the exhaust of the APU. Now we are moving to the left part of the, of the aircraft. Over there, below the door, we see uh, the aft outflow valve, which regulates the pressurization of the aircraft in flight. Now let's move to the left main gear. Brake wear, everything looks normal, the tires as well. No damage. The pins has been removed. So the flaps, flap around, ailerons. Same thing. On the left wing, we see the static discharge wicks. All in place, nav lights, so a white nav light from behind and on the left we see the red nav lights. Coming back to the left engine, you can see the, the fuel track which is loading the fuel actually. Today we're going to take about uh, 100 tons of fuel to go to Rainion. We will consume around 8 tons an hour with this aircraft. So I will uh, talk to the fuel guy to know the density of the fuel. Hello. So fuel density is uh, 0 0.795. This will help us uh, to calculate uh, if the amount of fuel is correct later on. So left engine uh, nacelle, everything looks okay. All panels are closed. The air intake is uh, clean, no sign of uh, damage or bird impact. The fan looks okay. Lower part of the engine as well. Leading edge of the wing. The uh, ram air intake for the fax. We can see the static ports over there. The negative pressure relief valve. And the forward outflow valve for the pressurization. One thing I forgot to mention is the crew oxygen discharge over there. So you see the green dot, which should be like this, meaning that uh, everything is okay with the oxygen bottle. So this is the end for the walk around, so let's go up and uh, continue for the flight preparation. So guys, we've been to the briefing office arriving at the airport, so we got the uh, flight plan from the dispatch. They gave us all the details that we have to uh, have a look before the flight. Details regarding the weather, details regarding the uh, specificities on the airport, specificities on the plane, the load, passenger, the freight, and all the, all the things we need to know to uh, plan the flight, to plan the fuel, and uh, to organize the, uh, the work today on that flight to Rainier Island. So. 
at the uh, very beginning of the flight plan on the file we got a recap of all what we have to to check before so all of us the three of us we have to discuss about each items and then that way we make sure that we didn't forget anything so that's why with my captain and Linz we're gonna discuss all the topics so the first one is the iPad we checked everything the iPads they are charged all the iPad is uh, checked yeah in compliance uh, everything is checked on the iPad the aircraft today is the 777 the Oscar Lima Romeo Echo and the parking position is the Alpha 18 in Paris Charles de Gaulle the aircraft is fine there is the one MEL which is uh, affecting only uh, commercial or medical it's a yes. medical outlet so it's and only there something is a medical C CDL too yeah so you, saw, you saw the CDL? No, I didn't see it. This is uh, the off seal of the flap room. Okay. But no effect for our flight today. There is no effect on the performance, no, no effect effects. on the flight. So the lot today, we just uh, been informed that we lost a little bit of freight. So we're going to depart with the five tons less than the weight we were expecting. So we just loaded a little bit less of fuel just to make sure um, we are not wasting fuel the uh, no special passenger the dry operating index we checked it together 47.5 weather is good good on departure good on arrival we can expect some turbulence over Egypt because we're gonna cross the jet stream and uh, maybe some CBs uh, south of Italy as usual I would say so the weather is checked the route has been checked, the ATC route via the uh, flight plan route. No time, we checked everything as well. The performance, we did the computation. Today we have no limitation. Today we take off. We can take off actually with the maximum takeoff weight. And uh, for the landing, the landing is going to be the same. We will be below the maximum landing weight. And we are doing another computation just before the top of descent. Limitation, we are below all the limits. Fuel, today we decided to uh, lift 97.8, that's on board. We checked the uh, we checked the quantity the guy gave us, we checked the... Um, liters. The liters, yeah, according to the fuel uh, density. And uh, today we add something like 113,000 liters of uh, fuel. And we were expecting exactly that amount, so it's... Yes, perfect for the flight. Document, we've uh, got the crew list. One moment, you make the announce uh, yes. for the fuel? Yes, we okay. did. So the document, the crew list is on board, Gen deck is on board, overflight permit, we got it in the flight file, and uh, all the rest has been checked. So for the uh, briefing package, we saw everything all together, and uh, the briefing package has been done. So now, we prepared the flight deck, we did the preliminar preliminary flight deck um, preparation. We have inserted the route, so I will uh, double check with my two colleagues um, what was inserted in the database, just to make sure we are flying the correct track. Ready for the route verification? Ready for the route check. So, today, Flying a 777-300 NGNGE90 115 BL, the database is active and is valid until the 25th of April. The fuel flow is 2.5. Position, Paris Charles de Gaulle, gate Alpha 18, and the uh, position is, uh, the uh, inertial position has been um, set on the GPS position, so it's double checked. The GPS is the first source of information of the FMC today. The RNP is 1, we are now 0 0.01, so we are in compliance with the uh, minimum RNP uh, accuracy we need. And the FMC left, which is the one on the captain's side, is primary route. Departing from Paris Charles de Gaulle, going to Réunion Island, runway 08 left. The flight number is Réunion 974. And for that flight, we will depart on an Okazi 2 hotel departure the chart is the 450 effective 3rd of January 2019 correct so departure is straight ahead to Papa Golf 082 then a right turn on the heading 102 for 7 nautical miles to Papa Golf 
88 and then sorry it's a track 212 36 nautical miles to position au stip 178 degrees 12 nautical miles to position au début 154 degrees 13 nautical miles to position au quasi check this departure is taking us to the flight level 120 which is the initial climb clearance is set and afterwards from the exit point of the SID we will fly the upper Lima 612 to Milpa upper Mike 730 to Kogas direct Nitam direct Mokbo direct Abdin direct Tarquinia direct Sierra Oscar Romeo direct Ekpa direct Belix and then the upper Mike 728 to Saloon upper Lima 604 Nodla Papa 557 Nuba upper November 321 to Ticat Upper Golf 300 Mike Alpha Victor, Upper Mike 665 to Uveso, Direct Denly, Upper November 304 Uvena, Direct Tezop, and then it's going to be the arrival for the runway 14 in Rainian Island. According to the FMC, we have a distance total of 5,155 nautical miles. For 5157, okay. And. Uh, Today, the flight time computed by the FMC is going to be 10 hours and 25 minutes. For 10 hours and 28. Okay, that's what we have. And uh, just for information on the VNAV page, so we have the speed restriction to comply with the SID, which is 280 knots below flight level 200. And uh, the noise abutment has been set by you, which is uh, 1500, and the acceleration will be 1300. Happy with that? Check. Okay. So it's been checked. Let's check the uh, reflight checklist. Reflight checklist. Oxygen. Tested uh, 100. Flight instrument. Heading uh, 339 and uh, 1001 with uh, 350. That's checked. Reflight checklist complete. Yes, good evening, sir. Take off purpose, it is to do it. Okay. Okay, be you running? He was running. Alain, le sol. Oui, vous pouvez donc reprendre les groupes. Oui, c'est ça. Travaillez. Pour le cordeau et là c'est pour nous. Ok. Merci. Vélo matoupe quoi. Merci, au revoir. Allez, Nicolas, are you ready? Yes. Ok, zero fuel weight is uh, two, three wine. 231.7 Two three one point seven. Okay. Okay. Two three one point seven. And uh, the map takeoff is uh, two eight point six. Two eight point six. So two three one point seven. Is giving us a takeoff weight of 328. Uh, we will ask for 329.5. Yeah. Okay. 329.5. Yes. Okay. We we okay. do the the OPT. Yeah. So you've got the latest at 80s. I just print it out. So Tango Tree is a good intersection for you. 
Yes, it's a good one. Okay, the CDL, CDL. Let me check. This is B08572601. Say again the reference. Uh, 572601 It's on the left, huh? On the left one? Left. Left. Airport Paris Charles de Gaulle, zero 08 left from Tango 3, runway is dry. The wind I put 120 at 5 knots, temperature is 12 degrees, QNH 1001. Optimum, optimum, auto, engine plus wing, auto for the MTI thing. The weight is going to be 329.5 for the uh, figures and the CG is 29%. There is no engine failure procedure and the result is flaps 508. Flaps 15 I have. Why? Because uh, I put uh, wind 0. You put wind 0? You prefer 0? So the wind is set to 0 and now I've got flaps 15 like you. It's yes. fine. So runway is still 08 left Tango 3, the weight 329.5, the acceleration 8 is going to be 1400, TO1 departure 95.9 and V1 175, VR 183, V2 186, VREF 30 is 176. Check. Got the same? Yes. So, uh, the CZ 28.6, okay. So let me check if I put it in all the place. Index perf 28.6. Done. 29. Yeah, not the same. 29, yeah. 440, okay. Merci. Push, put uh, the trash limit and then we check. Sure. So it's going to be T01. And as per the uh, SOP climb 2 for the climb out. Yes. Carry on. Flaps 15. 15. TO1 with the N1 95.9 uh, for 96.5. Check okay. V1 175. 175. VR 183. V2 186. 186. Ready for the read back? Yes. So it's going to be a flaps 15 T01 95.9, runway 08 left, Tango 3, protected for the weight of 329.5, V1 175, VR 183, V2 186. Good check. 186 is set on the FCU. Okay, uh, you can uh, check the clearance with the ATC. Okay, we got the clearance already. So, do you have the paper? If you want me to give you the clearance, departure 08 left, Okazi 2 Hotel, which is the one we've just briefed together. Okay. The squawk is 7557. And the next frequency, once we are fully ready, is 1 to 1 decimal 73, which is ready on the uh, set number 1. So departure should be in about five minutes. We've got just a few seconds for the uh, departure uh, briefing. Are you ready for the brief? Yes. So today the threat. I cannot see any threat today. We're used to it. Weather is good. Everything is fine. So it should be okay. Condition of the aircraft, all the messages we have on the uh, upper display are normal and everything is fine. Status of the plane, there is no message. Weather is good, no time we check everything. The fuel, we've got the fuel we decided to uplift, so we are good to go. Startup is gonna be a standard startup, so we start the push. During the push, we start engine uh, right, and then we start the engine left. Then we disconnect the push back, and then we start the taxi. So we can expect uh, from Alpha 18 a push facing west, actually, and then straight ahead to the holding point Tango Alpha 1, which is going to be the clearance limit. And then left turn, once we are clear to go on November, November is going to be a right turn to Tango 3, Tango 3, Cat 1 holding point. Okay. 
There is no hotspot on the way. The only uh, tricky thing is this uh, intersection we've got after Tango Alpha 1, which is a bit tricky. So if you see something, please tell Watch me. Up. So takeoff performance limitation, we've done it. Takeoff data have been done. The departure SID, we've briefed about that. The departure constraint, we've got only the speed constraint, uh, which has been inserted by you. Navigation setup. We've got Papa Golf Sierra, which is the VOR, is the uh, automatically set for the procedure. LNAV, VNAV, and uh, the uh, MCP is set on 186 for the V2. The heading of the runway is 085, and the first cleared altitude is flight level 120. In case we have an engine failure after V1, so just as a reminder, there is no action uh, below 400 feet except gear up, cancel the alarm. At 400 feet, uh, you give a look to what happened, you will tell me if there is any memory item at that time, I will ask you to carry on on the memory item. Uh, we continue climb to the 1,400 feet and we level off. We clean up the plane. Once we clean up the plane, uh, we continue to climb to the MSA. Today, we can plan on a way back to the runway 08 left. The platform altitude is 4,000 feet, so I suggest we continue climb to 4,000 feet. A bit higher if we need to uh, jettison some fuel. Then, in that case, we're going to have to climb to 6,000 feet. We ask for radar vectoring and we come back to runway 08 left. We did the computation. We are more than okay to land on the 08 left, which is the longest runway in Paris Charles de Gaulle. It's going to be an auto brake max auto and then I will adapt the braking for the landing. In case an immediate return, in case it's a smoke, something we cannot control. So we're going to have to uh, carry out the uh, overweight landing checklist and come back runway the right left. And again, ask for uh, radar vectoring 08 left. Perfect. I'm not going to do a visual pattern in Paris Charles de Gaulle, so it's going to be radar vectoring to take us back to the runway 08 left. Roger. Do you see anything special? Nothing. It's perfect. It's special. Before start checklist. Before start checklist, fight deck door. Close. Coming up. Passenger sign. Order. MCP. We do some, uh, 186, 085 and 120. Take off speed. V1 uh, 175, we are 183 and V2 186. So you pre flight. Trim. 525. Zero and zero. So, so we checked. Taxi and takeoff briefing complete. Before start checklist complete. Smoke up on the plane for the demarrage. Bien, dis-moi présent avec toi quand tu démarres le démarrage. On démarre. Levers idle. Start right engine. Right start. Oil pressed. Right start complete. Eh bien, c'est fait. Le push est terminé. Vous pouvez appliquer le front park. Ok, front park appliqué. On démarre le 1. D'accord. Donc démarrage moteur numéro 1 couvé. Est-ce qu'on on peut déconnecter le, le push et la barre Oui, déconnecter. Super, merci. Game break start left engine. Check. Left start.
oil price. Ready? Yes, we can. Parking brake is released. Two tongue wheel for one. Check, straight ahead as briefed. And we have the cabin ready. side Nine seven four contact one two one eight one bye bye. One two one eight one. Good evening. 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 the guy in the front we are number one okay you can turn left on November so First one is Tango, the second Echo, one is November, confirmed. Uh, yes, this one. Alpine 28 Victor with key, taxi first left to join Romeo and uh, holding point Tango 4. This way you'll depart behind, uh, before the 777. Roger, we have taxi first left to Romeo and uh, hold short at Tango 4 and we're able to Tango 4 Alpine 28 Victor with key, merci. Pass. The first part, as a reminder, the clearance is Okazi 2 Hotel, the one which has been inserted in the uh, in the box, timing flight level 1, 2, 0, agree? Okay, so it's going to be a flaps 15 departure, the trim is set at 5.25, runway 0, right left from Tango 3, V2 is 186, departure is going to be on Toga, Toga, and Navina, climbing flight level 1, 2, 0, flight gear, heading 085. Any failure before V1? I got stopped, you check the reduction, the deconnection of the auto throttle, and you announce the speed brake, the reverse, auto brake, 60 knots. I will uh, call the... Call the 974, will agency. you be ready, reaching holding point? We are ready, Renian 974. Renian 974, monitor tower 1209, goodbye. 1209, goodbye, Renian 1974. Next to the right, Tango 3. So I copied, and in case of a failure after V1, as brief, we continue on the SID, climbing initially to 4,000 feet. Any question, guys? No question. No questions.
Non, il est cabine ready. Hein. Clear right side, Tango 3, there is no stop bar, right we can go. Radio 974, wind 100 degrees, 10 knots, turn with 0 8 left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 0 8 left for Indian Line 974. Everything's fine, did you call the cabin? Yes. If you are ready, On runway zero before takeoff checklist. Left. Before takeoff checklist complete, checklist complete. Ready? Are you ready? Okay, yep. take off V1, 1725. Toi, Sref? Bonjour, identify the climb flight level 120. Climbing flight level 120, Rainian uh, 974. Check. That's right. That's a good check. That's right. That's one. That's a good check. One. 
wraps up. Let's get check. Wraps up. That's a pilot on. Check. Set altimeter standard. Standard. Take off checklist, please. Take off checklist, please. Check. Okay. Check. 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 Check.
guys so now we are 33,000 feet we still have another eight hours flight to reach our destination so it's a kind of uh, quiet so far so we have some a little bit of time to uh, give you some explanation about the plane about the systems how it works I mean a uh, kind of uh, basic explanation the captain now is uh, flying the plane so I have a few minutes to uh, try to explain to you the basic of the plane so as you can see at the top we can uh, we have a lot of buttons uh, actually it's quite simple I mean everything is divided in a uh, different system so on this part of the plane you have everything which is related to electricity electrical which is uh, powering the aircraft I mean every system you can see you see many buttons but everything is we have all the system twice minimum sometimes three times the same system just to make sure we have uh, redundancy if something goes wrong then we have uh, a backup and if the backup is going wrong we have another backup so that's why you see so many buttons it's the same for the electricity and almost all the systems on the right side here you have everything which is hydraulic so basically the flight control they are hydraulically powered so we have the control on the different pump uh, supplying the different system here on this panel then here you have the seat belt sign this is the one you see when you're in the cabin and when we ask the passenger to stay seated and to remain with the seat belt fastened here you have some lights the external light we use during the taxi or during the takeoff usually we use the light in the lower spot uh, when we fly below 10,000 feet we use all the light just to make sure we are seen by the others and here we have all the fuel systems um, during the walk around my colleague gave you the explanation that the fuel is in the wings so then we have the different fuel pumps and we can access and we can balance the fuel we can check the fuel then I will show you later on what this fuel system looks like we have the anti-icing system and uh, we have here everything which is related to the uh, air system pressurization temperature and uh, everything which is um, for the uh, air conditioning in the plane so basically this is what we have all this breaker you can see at the top is something like uh, protection we don't use it very often so I mean every time we have to use one of those we go in the manual or the system is telling us what to do which one you have to pull out which have you have which one you have to pull in so basically we don't use this breaker very often here is the most I mean important is the uh, autopilot so we have the control on the system um, of the autopilots via the speed the heading the altitude selection so this is what we used to uh, used during the during the cruise because as you can see most of the time we are flying under the autopilot especially on a, lo on a long flight like that one we use the autopilot almost all the time here is the uh, different system we have and we can show a display of the system here I will show you so if we want to have some more details in case something goes wrong about the electrical system then we go on that page and we have all the information we need to know it's the same from the hydraulic the fuel the air basically all the system I gave you the explanation at the top we have a synoptic on the display here via this button so this is basically what we have to know on that one then we have the screen the screen is showing you the basic um, information you need to fly which is your attitude your heading your speed and your altitude at the top of this display you have all the information related to the autopilot here as you can see we have the map it's a kind of GPS like in the car and uh, this uh, yellow stuff you see right in the middle is some bad weather so the captain now is flying the plane is asking for deviation because we cannot enter everything which is red yellow we try to avoid just for the uh, passenger comfort so we need to fly now you see the captain is turning left just to avoid the weather just to make sure we keep safe for all the passengers at the back the seatbelt sign is on so everything is under control 
it's gonna take us about 20 minutes just to round it up after that it should be quite smooth so what what else do we have here on this screen you can also have all the engine parameters basic engine parameters and some more specific engine parameters we use it just to monitor if something is wrong to monitor the fuel consumption and everything sorry guys we're back now we had some uh, turbulence some bad weather over the uh, Greek area so now it's a bit better we just entered the Egypt uh, FIR and uh, it sounds smooth now so we have some time to give you some more explanation about the system of the plane so I was talking about the thrust lever so this is basically the control we have on the engine on the thrust that we give uh, to increase our speed or to decrease our speed and then on the top of the thrust lever you can see the reverser lever so this is what we use once we want to brake after landing it's a kind of aerodyna aerodynamic braking and this is what you can see when you're a passenger this is what you can see on the engine this is the plate which is moving backward on the engine and it's uh, aerodynamic effect to add the aircraft braking and uh, so that using the, this device will reduce the landing distance this is uh, something we use during the flight speed brake is something to reduce the speed to help us reduce the speed once we descend and uh, the control for it, for instance asks us to reduce the speed so we use this this is the part you can see on the wing which is going up and uh, is uh, giving us some drag and the drag helps us to brake and reduce the speed this is the flap the flap is a um, device we use for landing to reduce our speed again and uh, it's something that if we don't have any flap then we cannot reduce the speed enough to get landing distance which is in compliance with the runway we're gonna use uh, I mean we cannot land with a 200 220 knots so we need to reduce our speed and the only way to reduce the speed without stalling is to have that device which is at the trailing edge of the wing helping us to reduce the stall speed and that way we have approach speed that gives us landing distance and this landing distance we can we can land on uh, any airport this is the uh, engine control the fuel control on the engine basically is engine on engine off this is what we have to know so that's it for the uh, pedestal one of the main uh, the main thing we use in the plane once we are not using the autopilot is the uh, control column the yoke this is used to control the uh, lateral the plane and once we want to turn right then we have to take the yoke down to the right then you're gonna have the aileron on the right wing which is going up the one on the left wing is gonna go down and then the, the plane is gonna turn to the right so the same things if you want to go left and then once you want to go up you just have to pull on the yoke towards you and then the plane will pitch up you will see the nose pitching up on this uh, instrument and if you want to go down during the descent then you have to do the opposite movement then you go to the front you push on the yoke and then you will see the nose of the plane which is gonna go down the indication is the blue is like the sky and the brown is like the earth so if you take the down the, the nose down to the brown part of this instrument then you know that you are going down this is what we have on the yoke and you have something people that not obviously know is the pedal we have two pedals on the plane it sounds weird but actually we use it in two different situations on the ground we use it to steer the aircraft we have two different way to steer the aircraft on the ground we have this uh, control there is helping us to control the nose wheel but we can also use the pedals I mean if I push on the left side the nose of the plane on the ground will go left and if I go on the right side the nose will go to the right and at the top of the two pedals you also have a braking system I mean if I push on the top of the pedal it will break the plane so on landing if you remember we use we cut the power on the engine we use the thrust reverser and we also brake on the pedal like in the car so it's exactly the same in the air now usually we use the pedal to give us a turn coordination once we turn to the left or we turn to the right 
using the pedal take the nose also to the right also to the left giving us symmetrical symmetrical flight in turn so it's something we use for aerodynamic during the flight but also to steer the plane on the ground this is what we have guys now i think you know most of the system on that plane and uh, that's it let's continue the flight now we are in contact with uh, Cairo control again some weather ahead of us so we're gonna take care of the weather try to uh, run it up again and then we will back with you soon hi guys uh, welcome back so as you have seen uh, we swapped the seats uh, today i'm uh, acting as a, a cruise relief pilot so initially when uh, alain went to sleep i uh, replaced alain and now i'm replacing uh, nicolas we are now approaching uh, reunion islands we will be on the ground within uh, one and a half hour so we still have a bit of time to discuss about uh, the flight we did uh, this night and about uh, performances. So about the routing, uh, we took off yesterday from Paris Charles de Gaulle. You see the route over there. So initially we, uh, we overflew the Alps, then we flew along the west coast of uh, Italy we went over Malta and then uh, through Egypt then down to uh, Sudan Ethiopia Somalia and we are now currently in the FIR of Seychelles so we are over the sea approaching the point which is called Uveso that you see over there on the nav display so as you can see on the nav display there are some uh, thunderstorms in the vicinity so we might have to avoid this weather in order to uh, uh, keep the turbulence as low, uh, as low as possible. You see the circles over there, they are etops circles, which means that uh, outside of the, those circles, we are more than 60 minutes away from uh, accessible airports. So in this area, we are actually flying in ETOPS area. ETOPS stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operations, which is applicable uh, for this kind of airplane, as we are twin engine. So in order to proceed beyond 60 minutes of uh, an accessible airfield, we have to be approved ETOPS. Uh, this aircraft can fly up to 180 minutes uh, beyond an accessible airfield. So it's, uh, of course, okay for this kind of flight. So as you can see, we are now turning right in order to avoid this, uh, this weather. So we took the aircraft in heading mode in order to turn right and to quit the, the track initially for a few minutes in order to avoid this weather. So uh, about some figures about uh, the flight tonight. So we took off from Paris. Uh, relatively full actually fully uh, full of passengers with uh, 440 packs on board and uh, about uh, 15 uh, tons of freight of cargo so our takeoff mass yesterday was uh, 330 tons and with this aircraft we can even go up to 344 uh, tons so Actually, the 777 is one of the biggest twin-engine airplane uh, you can find uh, nowadays uh, with uh, huge engines, so you, s you saw it during the walk around. So the size of the, air the airplane is quite impressive. It's about uh, 75 meters, lo meters long, 65 meters width with huge engines, uh, General Electric, uh, delivering a lot of thrust, about uh, 115,000 pounds of thrust each engine. So to give you an idea, uh, each engine would be able to lever a truck of 50 tons vertically like a, like a rocket, basically. 
So also the size of those engines are quite impressive, more than three meters. It's the almost the diameters of a uh, Boeing 737. Um, about the takeoff, we did uh, last night. Uh, in order to save the engine life and also to reduce the cost of the maintenance of the engine, we try to we try not to take off with full power. Those engines are very powerful, but we try to save engine life by reducing the thrust as we have very long lo runways like in Paris Charles de Gaulle, 4 kilometers long we reduce the thrust during the takeoff so it takes of course a longer distance to reach our speeds but it will save engine uh, life so in order to optimize those performances we use software uh, for instance on this aircraft we use a non-board non -board performance tool on which you can enter uh, all the data uh, you have for takeoff. So yesterday we were in Paris Charles de Gaulle, runway 08 left. We took off from intersection uh, Tango 3, which reduced a little bit the takeoff distance available. Condition was dry, wind was relatively calm, temperature, QNH, and so on. So with a takeoff mass of about 330 tons, this gives us the takeoff speeds actually and the flap setting needed for takeoff so as you can see this is an ATM takeoff so it's an assumed temperature method by which we reduce the thrust uh, for takeoff if we if we would have takeoff with full thrust then I would have select full and in that case that is the takeoff thrust 104 percent and one and in assumed temperature method only 96.4 so this reduction of thrust allows to save engine life and to reduce maintenance cost in the engine. For the landing, we will also use this uh, software in order to calculate the landing distance. We input the landing mass, expected landing mass, landing runway, the, status, the state of the runway, if the runway is dry or wet, etc. And this gives us the landing distance. On this aircraft, we have an auto brake system and of course the more uh, we go through one two three or four the more uh, braking efficiency we will have so the landing distance will correspond to the the auto brake we select so for instance tomorrow i think we will use auto brake four and we will have around two thousand meters uh, landing distance so now uh, we started our cruise with a flight level of uh, three one zero and now as you can see the flight level is three five zero so during the flights we consume fuel of course the fuel consumption on this aircraft is around eight tons an hour uh, so we took off in paris yesterday with almost 100 tons of fuel and now the fuel remaining is only 24 tons so along the flights as we are getting lighter we try to always optimize our altitude in order to reduce the fuel consumption and so now Initially, we climbed from flight level uh, 310 three to 330, and uh, a few hours ago, we climbed to flight level 350, which is our uh, recommended altitude and also the optimum altitude for this current weight. Uh, upon landing in uh, Paris, the remaining fuel, uh, upon landing in uh, Reunion, sorry, the remaining fuel will be around 11 tons which will be our uh, our reserve fuel so with that 11 tons in case we have we perform the approach in Reunion and we cannot land we can do a go around wait a few minutes and if we cannot land in Reunion then we have the fuel to go to our uh, uh, destination alternate which is uh, Mauritius today so on the yeah on the PFD over there, uh, as you can see on the on the speed band, the margin between the the two amber lines in the flight is the flight envelope, and as you climb, this flight envelope reduces. So now it's quite open, but some sometimes if you are close to the maximum altitude, you will have here a very small, a very tiny space between the two amber bands, which means that you are close to the maximum uh, altitude operating altitude close to the coffin corner of the aircraft
Hi guy. Uh, uh, just a few words about uh, Air Austral and uh, Rainian Island. Air Austral is uh, one of the best French airlines located in uh, Rainian Island. Uh, Rainian is uh, located in the Indian Ocean between uh, Madagascar and Mauritius Island. This is a very nice island with a volcano and a mountain and beaches, of course. For the company, Air Austral, uh, we began the long haul in uh, 2003 with uh, the triple seven and uh, in uh, 2017 we start with the 787 so the we 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 fly on the both airline triple seven and 787 actually uh in the fleet, we have eight airplanes. We have uh, one ATR, two seven three seven eight hundred, three triple seven, and two seven eight seven. We operate from Rainian uh, to the domestic flight from the domestic flight uh, in Indian Ocean, Mauritius, Seychelles, South African. Uh, Madagascar and for the long haul we go to Paris Marseille uh, Thailand Bangkok and uh, Mayotte Mayotte Island and from Mayotte to Paris this is the most important uh, flight for us it this is a flight from uh, Mayotte to Paris yes uh, personally I uh, joined Air Austral 10 years ago and I do agree with Alain Alain is from Reunion but uh, I'm not I discovered Reunion uh, when I joined Air Austral in 2010 so uh, I discovered a beautiful island uh, uh, the landscapes uh, if you like to hike uh, if you like beautiful landscape well uh, Reunion is really really the place to be uh, as Anna said uh, beautiful volcano still active beautiful beaches a um, lot of things to do the food as well it's very very good uh, and here uh, the vicinity also very interesting to discover Mauritius, uh, Madagascar, and as Alain say, said, uh, Mayotte. So, well, personally, about my uh, my career, uh, I would say, like for many of us, uh, flying is a passion. Uh, and, well, as far as I can remember, I always wanted to, to become a pilot. So, uh, fortunately, uh, my parents... Uh, always support me in uh, in this so they allow me to fly very soon at the age of uh, 15 on gliders and it was a very good ex experience uh, I think gliders flying glider is a very good experience when you start flying because it really gives you the feeling of flying and uh, the, the, the feeling of this third dimension after that, I started flying on a single engine uh, piston, passed my uh, private pilot license. So when I really start the professional training, I, well, I was well prepared by doing gliders and single engine piston already. I had some hours. So if you guys want to become a pilot, I think a good advice is to prepare yourself as much as you can and be passionate because that will drive you through this, uh, this, this uh, through this training, and uh, in order to achieve uh, your goal. 
Um, my first job was uh, in uh, Brussels Airlines, the former Sabina. I flew um, BA146, Avro RG, which is uh, quite a challenging airplane. Uh, old fashioned, a lot of systems, and uh, I think it's a good airplane to start because it's you must understand really the, the systems uh, in order to, to handle this aircraft properly. Uh, so I flew uh, across Europe for about five years and then uh, I had the opportunity to join uh, Cargo B. Cargo B was a Belgian company based in Brussels, uh, flying cargo across the world on the Boeing uh, 747. So an amazing experience as well. And uh, unfortunately, Cargo B uh, went bankrupt uh, in 2009, so I had to find another job. And I was lucky to, to find a job within Aeroswell. So here I am since uh, 2010, flying 777, and since uh, 2017, as Alain said, the 787. So our uh, rating allows, allows us to, to fly both types, which is amazing and uh, very interesting for us to, to fly those both beautiful airplanes. Alain, uh, I don't remember what your first job was. Uh, uh, I start uh, in uh, executive airline. Ah, yeah, right. I start, uh, for me, I start uh, on a Beach uh, 200, Dornier 228, and Falcon 10. Ah, executive. 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 Then uh, I flew on a caravan, caravan uh, with a FedEx. And after uh, Air Austral on the Boeing 737. Then I went to the New Caledonia on the same airplane, 737. And uh, since uh, 20 years now, I returned back within Air Austral on uh, first 737, 777, and uh, 787. Hi guys again, uh, we are now coming to the end of the flight, so within a few minutes we will wake up uh, our friend uh, Nicola, who will prepare his, uh, himself for the approach and do the briefing with uh, Alain. We are still cruising at a flight level of 350 and uh, we expect to land <coughs> at uh, 15 past uh, 8 local time, so in about 45 minutes. Weather in Reunion is quite good. We will check the latest weather right now. 26 degrees. 26 degrees. 26 degrees, yes. In Reunion it's very simple. It's 26 degrees all the year. <laughs> so, here is the latest weather. Rainian uh, 6 at 3 o'clock Zulu time 100 degrees 11 knots so it will be runway 1-4 uh, an ILS cave ok so ceiling and visibility ok 26 degrees dew point 21 and a kinetic of 1015 With temporary 4,000 meters and some showers of rain, which occur sometimes. Scattered terrain cumulus at 20, 
2200 feet, broken 4000 feet. Okay, looking good. So we just got a message from ATC asking us to contact Reunion approach on 1272 at Point Uvena, which we see here on the nav display. Uvena 0348. So in uh, 18 minutes we have to contact Reunion on 1272. I accept the message. So here it comes. Hi Nicolas. Did you see Proel? Hi Nicolas, you are the best. So Links, I was telling uh, Alain that according to the landing calculation, to make the first exit on the right side on the to exit via Alpha, photo break four is perfect, 1887 meters. Okay. Fine. So regarding the briefing, today the threat, look the weather is good, it's going to be an approach by day, so daylight, the wind is calm, so I cannot see anything special for the approach, the weight is 243 tons, so it's well below the maximum landing weight, so there's no issue I guess, the traffic is, sounds to be calm as well. So there's no threat according to me. Any idea? No. Okay. The aircraft condition I checked, the status, there's no message. Recall, nothing. And there's no note. The weather, we talked about the weather already. No times, nothing is affecting us. Some uh, drone flight around the uh, Bay of St. Paul. But they said it's going to be... Uh, the information will be given by the ATC. So if it doesn't say anything, means there's no issue for us. The fuel... I checked the calculation, we have more than 30 minutes in case we need to hold before diverting to Mauritius Island. And the top of descent in about 5 minutes, the arrival, we've just been cleared to fly the Uvena 1 Romeo arrival, so if you don't mind we can check the charts. Uvena Unité Romeo is the uh, 610 effective 26th of April 2018, Check. which is followed by the ILS uniform for the runway 14 on the chart 740, effective 1st of March 2018. Correct. Okay, according to this chart, the trajectory should be overfly Uvena and then track 176 degrees for 139 nautical miles to Tezop. Check. We have a constraint at Tezop, 3000 feet at or above, and then we intercept 135 degrees, 2 nautical miles. Sierra Delta Golf 12. I inserted a constraint 200 knots, 3000 feet, just to make sure we are uh, on the profile before we intercept the glide slope. We intercept Kay. the glide slope 9.3 nautical miles at 3000 feet, which is the last platform altitude we're gonna use. And then, once established on final, we go down on a pass on a slope of 3 degrees down to the minima of 5, uh, sorry, 420 feet which is set on my side. In case we see the runway, then we land and we vacate to the right. We discussed already about the landing distance computation. In case something goes wrong, then we have to go around. The go around will be according to the box, climb straight ahead and a left turn to Lacaz. And again, left on the track 309, 16 nautical miles to Ochner, 3000 feet. After the go around, then we just pick up the hold, make a decision according to what happened, why we did the go around, and then if everything is fine, then we can try a second approach or we decide to divert. Okay? Once we're inside of the runway, at the minimums, we have Papi on the left side. Papi is set at 3 degrees, exactly the same path as the uh, glide slope, so there shouldn't be any, any difference between the glide slope and the Papi once we're inside. Guys, yeah. the acceleration is 2,400 feet during the go-around. Anything you see you don't like, anything you want to add or any any advice you want to give me Alain, feel free. No problem. If you see any deviation from my from my side. Navigation setup, it's already set on uh, Delta 
Sierra on Sierra Delta, sorry. So we need to uh, identify the ILS before we intercept. And taxi to the gate. Taxi to the gate. So as we said, it's going to be right turn onto Alpha and then Alpha all the way. We wait for the information. Clint will give it to us Kay. as soon as we can. Are we catch this descent? Please. Roland Garros uh, from Radio 974, chat position Vena, level 350, request descent. Radio 974, descent 3000 feet, turn edge 1016. Clear the ILS, uh, uniform 1 for approach, report TESAP. Clear down 3000 1016, clear the ILS uniform 1 for, call the back TESAP, Radio 974. 1016. 1016 is set on the right side, and 3000 feet is set. Guys, do you have any question? No question. Okay. No questions. Listen, checklist. Recall. Checked. Note. Checked. Auto break. Four. Landing data. VRF 147, barrow 420 feet. Approach briefing completed. Descent checklist complete. Thanks. Okay, all good. So now we're descending to uh, position TESA. The autopilot is descending by itself, trying to intercept the path to establish on the final runway 1-4. So, so far everything is done by the autopilot by itself. And we're just monitoring, all of us, if everything is going right. We've already been clear to intercept the ILS. So now my plan is to get the uh, flaps one just before we intercept position TESOP. Okay. Once we pass TESOP, I'm going to ask you for the uh, flaps five. And uh, next step will be the gear down and flaps 20 by 2,500 feet above the ground level. Roger. The rest, we plan to get the stabilization at 1,000 feet. So the flaps full will be asked well before to get the speed. And will be stabilized at 1,000 feet for the approach. Perfect. Gear down, flaps 20. Speed check. Gear down. Six miles, final runway 14, Indian 974. Rainer 974, runway 14, clear to end 140 degrees 10 knots. Clear to end 14, Rainer 974. So 
you see we have some weather on the go around. Yes. Lap 30. Speed check. Lap 30. Speed back on top. Lamp 3, landing checklist complete. Checklist complete. Stabilized. So like 60 knots. Check. Réunion 974 à droite Alpha et le poste 3. Alpha and get three Iranian nine seven four good day. As briefed. As briefed. Okay, right turn, right side is clear. Is coming. Okay, so I will slow down just yes. to make sure. Slow down. We arrive soon. Slow down.
stop. APU running, parking brake set. Shut, get off. 24. Bonjour. Bonjour. Je suis en train de caler l'avion, je vous informe dès que c'est fini. Ok, et pourquoi on a attendu là euh, Je sais pas, les mecs euh, de R2A n'étaient pas là. D'accord, donc toi tu fais que la radio alors Exactement. À chacun son boulot. Hein. Ah, il faut pas empiéter sans celui des autres. L'avion est calé. Ok, je relâche la fin, tu peux faire approcher les passerelles. L'avion stabilisé, je fais amener les passerelles. All good All good, well done. Thank you guys for well flying done. in Austral, see you next time. Ok guys, thanks Bye for guys. watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye.